Welcome back you guys, your boy CK. Now when you have a discussion about the best teams of the 2010s, it would be impossible to leave out the 2015 Carolina Panthers. The Panthers were the first team since the 2009 Colts to start 14-0. They tied the 2012 Niners and the 2017 Rams for the most first team All-Pro players on a single team in the decade with six players earning the honor. Despite the lack of a real number one wide receiver, Cam Newton, Greg Olson, Jonathan Stewart, they made the offense work. While Keekley and Norman led a defense that corralled 39 takeaways tied for the third most of the decade. Their run to a 15-1 record was no accident, as they had the sixth best point differential of any NFL team in the 2010s. They may have came up short in the Super Bowl, but they were very dominant. And now, I'm gonna put them in today's NFL. Now, I know a lot of you guys play mutt, and sometimes you don't feel like grinding to get the best team. So if you wanna just buy some training or coins or players, head on over to muttreserve.com. Use my code CK. And not only will you be rich one day, but you'll also get 15% off your order. Now, we've already done the team that beat this team in the Super Bowl. So this is the first time we're actually doing a squad that didn't win the Lombardi during the series. If you guys want to vote for the next one, I'm streaming right after this video goes live. Link will be the first one in the description. Now, let's take a look at the Ron Rivera-led team that was first in scoring and sixth in points allowed. Superman is in the building. <laughs> yes, he is. Cam Newton won NFL MVP that year year he threw for a total of 3837 yards 35 touchdowns while also rushing for 636 yards and 10 touchdowns so he's going to be a 94 overall his highest rating ever in any Madden. Backups were Derek Anderson, Joe Webb. Running back, they had Jonathan Stork, who made the Pro Bowl. He had 989 yards, six touchdowns, and he added another touchdown through the air. Cameron Artis Payne, Fozzie Whitaker, the big bruiser himself, Mike Tolbert, also made first team all pro. That was a guy that when he got in open field, you just, you did not want to tackle him. Now, one of the earliest criticisms of this team was that they didn't have the best wide receivers. A lot of analysts were saying that, you know, they just would not be able to overcome that. But a big part of it was because Kelvin Benjamin was put on IR before the season started, but he was on the team. So he is on this squadron, along with the other wide receivers that had to step up, like Tegan Jr., Corey Philly Brown, Devin Funches. You also had Burson and Norwood. But this is a team that came out in 12 personnel to start the game. So they had to rely heavy on their tight ends. Most notably, Greg Olson, one of the best tight ends of our generation. During the season, he had 77 catches for 1,100 yards and seven touchdowns, one of Cam's favorite targets. But not only him, man, Ed Dixon was a solid backup. And he also had Scott Simmonson. Olsen ended up being the third Pro Bowler, but there were a couple more on the offensive line. Not only did Ryan Kalil make the Pro Bowl, he was also first team all pro, which if you're keeping square at home, that's three on their entire offense. However, the defense was also really good. Charles Johnson and Mario Addison had left in. They had veterans that were near the end of their careers, like Jared Allen. He was backed up by Coney Ealy. They ran a 4-3, so obviously you need some great D tackles, and that's exactly what they had. Kawan Shores. Starla Tula Lake, how love. You had AJ Klein backing up a rookie Shaq Thompson, who got to play alongside one of the best linebackers of all time and Luke Keekley. This is a man that was first team all pro five times in six seasons. If he didn't retire early, man, he, he would be in the conversation for the best MLB of all time. He's backed up by David Mayo. And then of course you can't forget about Thomas Davis. One could argue that he actually had a better season statistic wise than Luke Keekley. With five and a half sacks, four interceptions, a fumble recovered, he was doing it all. And he earned first team all pro honors as well. He was backed up by Ben Jacobs. And as for cornerbacks, well, this was the Josh Norman season. He went into the next Madden as the highest rated cornerback. This man thrived in zone coverage. He was on the other side of Charles Peanut Tillman, who actually got injured, but came back to play in the Super Bowl. So they relied on guys like Benet Benwickere, Cortland Finnegan, Robert McClain to step up. Kurt Coleman was a big reason why they were able to get 39 takeaways because he got seven interceptions on the season. You also had Colin Jones, Roman Harper, Trey Boston, Graham Gano. Can they duplicate the 15-1 record? And can they make it back to the Super Bowl? Let's find out. So they end up finishing second in their division, right behind Tom Brady's Buccaneers. They started off pretty hot. Their only loss came in week two early on. Three of the losses came to division opponents. One of them was to Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, and then one of them was to the football team. Cam had a good season. Great touchdown interception ratio. Two touchdowns 
touchdowns on the ground. So not quite his MVP season, but he still did his thing. Tolbert, five touchdowns. Same with Jonathan Stewart, who also had a thousand yard season. Camera artist Payne had seven. One more than Benjamin and Olsen, who led the way in receiving. Ted Ginn had the most receiving touchdowns with nine. On defense, Keekly, of course, led the way in tackling. Thomas Davis, Kawan Short, only guys with double digit tackles for loss. Thomas Davis with eight and a half sacks. Also led the team in that category. Kawan was second. Keekly was third. Peanut Tillman had two interceptions and then a lot of people had one. Offense ended up 20th in yardage. Defense was top five. Zach Wilson ends up with an MVP. Cam doesn't make the top 10, but he ended up six for OPOY in the NFC. No Panthers made top 10 for DPOY. They did not end up with the first seed in the playoffs, so they got to play the wild card game versus the Eagles. We got ourselves a tie game early in the fourth quarter. Cam with the ball in a second and four. Plenty of time, gonna dump it off to Greg Olson. They find themselves across midfield. Cam is being surgical on his drive. Take what the defense is giving him. On a season, they're fifth in rushing, but today, they only have 24 rushing yards. Eagles defense doing their job. But stopping Tobert from getting an inch seems like an impossible task. Graham Gano lining up to hit the game-winning kick, and the Panthers are headed to the divisional round. Now you get to see the Panthers versus Tom Brady and the Bucks. Panthers defense came to play, man. They held Tom Brady and that offense only seven points the run games doing much better this game store is just under 80 yards on 20 rushes they're controlling the clock Cam just gets rid of it but there's Devin White the speedster it should be illegal to be that fast at linebacker I don't care man third and 14 Cam bottom of the screen not gonna get the first Cam Brady works some heroics man he's down two possessions needs to start making some plays biggest play of the game fourth and five in their own territory the Bucks have to go for it they have no choice brady gonna try to get it to a b it's incomplete and the panthers are gonna move on to the conference championship game now we get to see the panthers take on the san francisco 49ers big third down for the panthers down two in the niners territory i guess it's amazing d line they throw a screen and it goes nowhere but there's a flag rough in the pass on eric armstead that's huge third and goal cam gonna get sacked by jaquiski tart they're gonna have to settle for the three now barring a miracle the panthers are gonna be headed to the super bowl just like they did in the 2015 season lance gonna air it out and it's incomplete so it all comes down to this the panthers versus the browns in the big game say it ain't so carolina not like this 41 to 7 headed in to the final quarter but at least they got back to the super bowl man that's better than a lot of teams in this series could say still a great season by cam keekly and company thank you guys for watching to the end if you did enjoy it destroy that like button also don't forget to subscribe if you know and come vote for the next one over on my stream man link in the description if you want to but until next time